in this lecture we will study noise factor and uh, equivalent noise temperature these two parameters are used to characterize thermal noise behavior of an amplifier so we'll see that how they are defined for uh, an amplifier and then we will see that uh, for a cascade of say two amplifiers what will be the corresponding equivalent parameter in terms of the uh, parameters of the individual amplifiers so first we will see what is noise factor It is designated by symbol capital F. So let us consider a noisy amplifier, which has power gain of G. And this noisy amplifier is being uh, fed by input power PI, and it produces output power of PO. It is also receiving a noise power of ni and on the output side we are observing a total noise power of no so this uh, no the total noise power this will contain two components one is this input noise power appearing on the output side after amplification which will be by factor of g and a noise power added by the amplifier however the output power output signal power to be more precise PO, this is going to be simply G into PI. So this is, so uh, you can say from the definition also of the gain. Now, what is the definition of uh, noise factor? Noise factor is defined as the ratio of input SNR to output SNR. So here input SNR is going to be equal to input power divided by input noise and output SNR is output power divided by output noise so now we can uh, calculate uh, what will be noise factor so from three four five noise factor f turns out to be Pi by Ni divided by Po by No. So this becomes Pi by Po dot No by Ni. Now we can substitute uh, output quantities, output noise and output power in terms of uh, previous equation. That means equation one and equation two. So the, the defining equation for noise factor is this equation number three. 
in terms of uh, input and output SNR. Here we find that uh, noise factor can also be calculated in terms of uh, noise. So what we find here is that in the numerator, we have the total noise power that we will see at the output of noisy amplifier. So this is the total output noise power for the noise amplifier. And the denominator, what we see is uh, input noise, this input noise amplified and appearing on the output side. So there are two ways in which the denominator can be interpreted. One is that this amplifier is noiseless and the only noise present in the system is the input noise and that gets amplified by factor G and then appears on the output of the amplifier. Or we can also say G and I is the uh, noise appearing at the output other than that of the, uh, that due to the amplifier. Or uh, NI can also be considered the uh, noise source. So output uh, side can be interpreted as uh, total output noise for noiseless amplifier or this can also be interpreted as total output noise power only due to the noise source. So these are the two ways in which uh, this can be looked upon. Now, this equation number six can be further simplified as one plus the amplifier noise divided by the input noise after amplification. So here, what we find is that the minimum value of noise factor that is possible is equal to one. And this will be for noiseless amplifier. Now we define a parameter called a noise figure. And it is designated as NF. A noise figure is noise factor expressed in decibel unit. So if you see the data sheet of uh, any low noise amplifier, it is a noise figure which will be provided. So now from seven, we can see that the minimum noise figure that can one achieve or can occur in at least principle is zero dB. So for any amplifier, it's a noise figure is always going to be greater or equal to zero dB. And here I would like to emphasize that uh, this uh, output noise power from the amplifier is independent of the input noise power. So this is one point. Second point is that uh, here uh, we found that uh, noise factor expression involves gain parameter, which is characteristic of, uh, of an amplifier, but it also involves the input noise power. 
That means if I change the input noise forward, then this noise factor for the given amplifier is going to change. So to keep uh, this noise factor characteristic of an amplifier and make it independent of uh, this input noise, what is done is we take a standard input noise power to the amplifier. So when we have an amplifier, and if you want to find out what will be the noise factor, we give a standard input noise power and uh, then calculate uh, the noise factor using this formula. So what is that uh, standard NI that is given to amplifier while calculating the noise factor or noise figure? So for that, what we do is so uh, we take a register which is uh, say noisy, of course, but then we model it by its uh, noise source, and then see that uh, what is the maximum noise power that it can deliver to another load. And of course, that load has to be equal to R, then only uh, it can uh, provide the maximum or it can absorb the maximum noise power from this R. So here we have noise source up to this point. And here we have load. So we want to see that what is the maximum noise power that can be delivered and that we will call as ni so here the power to load is going to be so vl uh, is going to be the root mean square voltage divided by two because load is also equal to r so it's a square multiplied by one by r so this is going to be the power to the load noise power so this becomes vn mean square divided by four one by r and this becomes 4 k t r delta f by 4 r so this turns out to be k t delta f so the maximum noise power to load is going to be this so this ni the standard ni is k t delta f at temperature of 290 Kelvin. For some of the author, they say that at temperature of 293 Kelvin. So this is a standard input power to the amplifier while finding out its noise factor. So this is uh, about the noise factor. Now we will uh, talk about what is the noise uh, equivalent temperature and where this idea arises from. So here we find that uh, we take one observation that uh, this noise power, it has a uh, few property. First is that uh, it is independent of frequency. So it is independent of frequency, although it depends upon the bandwidth. And uh, it's a power spectrum density that is also going to be independent of frequency. So such noise sources are called white noise sources. 
because spectrum of uh, white light is flat independent of frequency. So if we have any uh, component, any source, any network, which has this uh, uh, white noise type of behavior, that means it's power spectrum density or power, uh, uh, or power produced is independent of frequency, then that component can be modeled by a register. So if we have a network, noisy network, to be more precise, white noisy source, and this source could be a component or network whose, say, output impedance or resistance is equal to R and uh, it is terminated by a load equal to R so that the load receives the maximum uh, noise power. And let us say that noise power to load is NO. Now this scenario can be modeled with the help of a noisy register of a resistance R connected to previous load R. But now this will be at temperature Te such that even in this case, my load continues to receive the same noise power that it was receiving in the actual scenario. That means case two, so, sorry, case one. So this case one and case two, they are equivalent in terms of the noise power that is delivered to the load R. So if we are able to establish this equivalence, then we can say that this source, white noise source, has equivalent noise temperature equal to Te. So now let us try to find out what will be this Te. So we have already seen that uh, if we have a source with uh, resistance R, it is connected to a load equal to R then in that case, the noise power that will be delivered to the load is going to be KT delta F. So this is the uh, noise power for case one. Now in case two also, what we are claiming is that the load will receive the same noise power. So in the case uh, two, the noise power that will be delivered is uh, going to be KTE delta F because this source, uh, noisy source, which is being modeled by register R is at temperature TE. So in the case two, the power delivered to the load is going to be KTE delta F. So we already know what is NO in the case one from here. So from this, we can find out what will be the equivalent noise temperature and that will be equal to NO divided by K delta F. So this says that 
if in case two, this register is physically kept at temperature of T E, then this load will continue to get the exactly same power that it was getting in case one, the actual scenario. And then we say that uh, 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 this uh, white noise source has uh, equivalent noise temperature uh, equal to T E. And this will be equal to N O divided by K delta F. So this becomes a characteristic uh, parameter of uh, the noisy source. Now this concept of uh, equivalent noise temperature can also be used to characterize a noisy amplifier. So for that also we will see the two cases. So we have here noisy amplifier and this amplifier is feeding to a load equal to R and uh, amplifier has uh, output resistance equal to R and uh, it is being fed by a source with uh, internal resistance is equal to R. So we want to know uh, what will be the uh, noise power delivered by the amplifier itself. The noise power produced by amplifier alone. And let us say that uh, noise power is equal to NO. So to be able to see the noise produced by only the amplifier, we should take a noiseless source. So this source is noiseless and that we can uh, model by keeping this register at zero Kelvin. So physically, of course, uh, this cannot be done, but in theory, we can uh, keep it at uh, zero Kelvin. In that case, the noise input power is going to be zero. So whatever we see on the output side is only due to the amplifier. So this NO is only due to the amplifier. So here NI is equal to zero since R is at zero Kelvin. Now this scenario, that means in terms of the noise power to the load can be equivalently represented by a noiseless amplifier Amplifier. So in this case, if you want to see any noise, that must be coming from the input side. So here there should be some non zero NI, and this non zero NI now has to be produced by uh, register R, which should be kept at suitable temperature of TE. So here the uh, source R is at temperature T E Kelvin. Now this will deliver input noise N I to the amplifier, which has a power gain is equal to G and this will produce finally an output noise N O, which will be G times N I. So in this case, power to the load, noise power to the load 
NO is going to be G and I. And we have already seen that uh, since the input the resistance is also equal to R. So this uh, NI is going to be K T delta F, where T is the temperature of this register, which we have kept at temperature T E. So in this case, the noisy amplifier can be characterized by this parameter NO divided by G K delta F. So this becomes uh, equivalent noise temperature of a noisy amplifier, which has power gain is equal to G. So this uh, is, of course, all these descriptions are valid only for the case where uh, the amplifier or device or source is of white uh, noise type. So this is another characteristic par parameter of a noisy amplifier. Now we have uh, uh, sort of found or defined uh, noise uh, factor and noise equivalent temperature for a single amplifier. So now we would like to see that what happens if we cascade uh, two such amplifiers, then what will be the overall noise factor or the equivalent noise temperature? So here we have a noisy amplifier one with power gain is equal to G1, noisy amplifier with power gain is equal to G2, and its uh, noise factor is F1, a noise factor of the second amplifier is F2. So what we are looking for is an amplifier which will also have a gain equivalent to the previous two and a noise factor equivalent to these two. So what is the meaning of equivalence? We want these two scenarios to be equivalent. That if we are feeding noise uh, power Ni to the cascade and signal power Pi, so we will be feeding the same Ni and Pi to our equivalent amplifier such that uh, here for the equivalence case, of course, we will get this Ni amplified plus a noise power added by the amplifier and signal amplified. But for the actual scenario, what will happen is uh, we will have output in two stages. First, this Ni will get uh, amplified and the amplifier itself will add its own noise, NO1, and signal will, of, of course, also will get uh, amplified. Now, the second amplifier will amplify all these components because these are the input to the second amplifier. So, for the noise, we are going to get the amplified version of uh, all this noise. So, this is G1. Ni plus NO1. So this is the amplification of the input. Now the second amplifier itself will add noise. And for the signal, we are going to get a signal which will be amplified version of the input one. So on the input side, we see that the 
conditions are same for the both the case the actual case and the equivalent case on the output side also these two conditions they should be same then only we will say that both the scenarios are equal so first thing that should get satisfied is for signal that means what we are getting for the equivalent case that should be equal to the actual scenario so this implies that the gain of the equivalent amplifier should be equal to simply product of the gain of the individual amplifiers now for noise what should happen is the total noise that we see on the equivalent side which is equal to this gni plus noa should be equal to the total noise that we see here for the actual scenario so that is equal to g2 g1 ni plus no1 plus noise added by the second amplifier so from this say equation number 9 we see g1 g2 and i plus noa is equal to g2 g1 and i plus g2 and o1 plus and o2 so this gets simplified to noa equal to g2 no1 plus no2 because these two they cancel out so what is our objective our objective is to find relation between the equivalent noise factor this factor and the individual noise factors and maybe the gain because uh, gain is characteristic of each of the individual amplifiers so what now we do is we substitute these uh, each of these uh, uh, each of these noise powers output noise power in terms of noise factor and gain so for that we take the help of uh, definition of noise factor for each of the three amplifiers So noise factor for the equivalent amplifier is going to be one plus NOA, the noise power from the amplifier divided by the input noise power amplified. Similarly, the noise factor for the first amplifier is going to be noise produced by the amplifier divided by the noise amplified by the first amplifier. So here, if we see the input noise to these two cases, to the equivalent and to the first amplifier, the input noise is Ni, right? But if you see the input noise to the second amplifier, then that is going to be, in this case, equal to this whole thing. But keep in mind that when we define the noise factor, we keep the input noise to the amplifier equal to the standard noise which is equal to k t delta f so in this case when we write the expression for f2 we are not going to take this as the input noise to the second amplifier rather this second for second amplifier also the input noise is going to be n i because these uh, noise factor they are calculated for standalone system and uh, this is the noise produced by the amplifier divided by standard noise into the gain so even for f2 
the input noise is going to be only Ni, not G1 Ni plus NO1. So this is where we have to be careful, otherwise we will not be able to arrive at the correct uh, formula for the cascade. So here we find that we have to eliminate uh, these uh, noise powers. So from these three equations, we find out the expression for the amplifier noise power. So this becomes uh, F minus one into G and I. From here, we get NO1 is equal to F1 minus one into G1 and I. From here, we get NO2 is equal to F2 minus one G2 and I. So now we substitute uh, each of these. So into equation 10. So we get F minus one G and I is equal to G2 into F1 minus 1 G1 and I plus F2 minus 1 G2 and I. So here G is G1 into G2. So what we did uh, now, what we can do is we can uh, divide both sides by. G1, G2, Ni. So we get F minus one is equal to F1 minus one plus F2 minus one divided by G1. So this gives rise to F is equal to F1 plus F2 minus one by G1. So here we have a very important uh, conclusion to make. So it says that the noise factor of the second stage, uh, its contribution gets diminished by factor is equal to G1, the gain of the first stage. So what we find is that the, uh, if we have a cascade of amplifiers, then it is the first stage whose noise factor has the strongest effect on the overall noise factor. So that is why what we try to do, we try to keep the first stage with uh, low, as low as possible noise factor. So that is the first thing that we try to do. Second thing that we try to do, we try to keep high gain for the first stage because if the gain of the first stage is more, it will uh, minimize the effect of the noise factor of the second stage. Now this formula, when it is uh, generalized to multiple stages, This becomes F is equal to F1 plus F2 minus 1 G1, F3 minus 1 G1 by G2. So here you can see that the e effect of uh, the third stage noise factor gets diminished by a factor of product of first and second stage power gain. So on so forth. So it is the first stage or the uh, initial stages which are more crucial in terms of the uh, overall noise factor contribution. And this uh, equation is called uh, Friss equation.
for noise filter. Now we would like to see what happens for the equivalent noise temperature of the amplifier. So now we have two amplifiers of gain G1, G2, and equivalent noise temperature TE1 and TE2 being fed by NI and PI. And uh, we want to have an equivalent amplifier also being fed with NI and PI, gain is equal to G and TE as the equivalent noise temperature. So we want to uh, have relation between T and that of the T1 and T2, maybe involving G1 and G2. So here also uh, equivalence will be established in terms of what we see on the output side. So here also the first amplifier amplifies both noise and signal power and it adds its own noise then it gets amplified by the second amplifier signal also gets amplified by second amplifier so here also equivalence will be in terms of the uh, same output power on the output side, same total noise power on the output side. So when we compare two, we land up with a similar equation. That is uh, for output signal power, G P I is equal to G1, G2 P I. So that gives G1, G2 as the overall gain for noise we land up with the same equation that we did for the previous case here so that means ultimately we arrive at same equation equation number 10 that means so uh, total amplifier noise power is going to be g1 and o1 plus and O2, so this is equation number 10 we have already got. Now we want a relation between the uh, equivalent noise temperature. So we now need to eliminate uh, each of these uh, powers, noise powers in terms of the equivalent noise temperature. So we will write the definition for uh, equivalent noise temperature for the three cases. So, the equivalent noise temperature for the overall amplifier is going to be NO divided by G K delta F and uh, that for the first amplifier is going to be NO1 divided by G1 K delta F and uh, that of the second amplifier is going to be NO2 divided by G2 K delta F. This is going to be an OA. So from here, we find out these noise powers. So we can now use these equations to eliminate the noise powers from equation 10.
So here we can divide. Both sides. By. G1, G2, KE delta F. And here noting that this G is equal to G1, G2. So what we get is on left side, we get TE. It is a mistake. So here, this is G2, not G1. Generally, this is going to be G2, not G1. So this is going to be TE1 plus TE2 divided by G1. So we see that equivalent noise temperature for cascade is equal to sum of that of the first stage and second stage equivalent noise temperature attenuated by factor G1. So here also the behavior is similar to what we got for the noise factor. That means it is the first stage which makes the largest contribution towards the equivalent noise temperature. And the contribution of the second stage will be attenuated by the gain of the first stage. So that is why one has to be very careful in choosing the first stage. Now here also, generalization is possible for n stages. And the pattern is similar to that of the noise factor case. And this equation is called this uh, equivalent noise temperature. Equation. Hello, sir. Yes. How can we reduce uh, noise of uh, first amplifier? Sir? How can we reduce the noise of what? The first amplifier do, uh, during cascading, sir. Okay, first so uh, that will be the topic of uh, low noise amplifier uh, module, which will start uh, from witness day. So there we try to uh, do something in the amplifier so that the noise factor is. Uh, less and uh, one thing that you can always uh, uh, conclude very easily uh, especially for the thermal noise because all these discussions are uh, for the thermal noise uh, because only the thermal noise can be at the best white noise uh, the flicker noise of course is one by f dependent so that cannot be white noise so thermal noise as the name suggests uh, is uh, uh, it arises because of the physical temperature of the uh, amplifier or the devices. So one can always reduce the physical temperature to reduce the contribution uh, in terms of the thermal noise, but that of course involves additional resources. And uh, in such scenarios where this is very important, for example, in the case of deep space communication, that means when you are communicating from Earth to Moon or to uh, satellites which uh, are uh, near some other planets, Mars or so on and so forth, then in that case, uh, this is in fact done. The receiver is uh, submerged into a cryogenic liquid whose temperature is uh, uh, minus 200 degrees Celsius or even lower. 
but for uh, consumer electronics and for daily use this cannot be done and uh, moreover we do not deal with such a low signal in our daily life so there we do something at the amplifier level at the circuit level we will see that that is enough 